Hey everyone, it's Ikaro Nakamura here again. I'm going to show you a few different games I played in Norway and a couple of videos that are upcoming. So to start, I'm going to start with the first round game that I played against Anish Giri in the recent Norway chess event. It was a very interesting game, and I was able to outplay him and win in a very interesting and long end game. And that got me off to a good start, which sort of helped me uh, get into the tournament and and have a good result for the most part. So, okay, so into the game, and here we go. So I started by playing d4. Anish played knight f6. In a few of our recent encounters, he's, he's chosen to play the Slav, um, primarily the Moran variation with uh, e6. And in the Singfield Cup last year, I played bishop to g5 and turned into um, a Botvinnik. And um, in our more recent games, I also played E3 as well, um, including a game in the candidates from uh, last year. So in this particular game, Anish played Knight F6, which he also plays quite frequently just against me. He's played the Slav uh, quite a few times more recently. So I played C4, G6, Knight C3, and now Anish played D5, playing the Grunfeld, which has been his major opening for quite some time. And I, th I think if I think back to his recent games, uh, probably the most prominent game that he had with the Grunfeld was a game where he beat Magnus Carlsen in Vikonze a few years back. It was a Fianchetto Grunfeld. He played a great game. Magnus played some dubious moves in the opening and, and lost in, I think, about 17 moves with White. So it was a very striking game. And ever since then, Anish has been playing the Grunfeld uh, pretty much all the time. So it didn't really surprise me, and, but I, I, I wasn't sure who would play it. So I played bishop g5. He played knight to e4, played bishop to h4. Um, bishop to f4 is also another variation that's been played here. Uh, it leads to similar positions, but the difference is that normally on bishop f4, after knight takes c3, bc3, black normally won't play this line with d takes c4, whereas after bishop to h4, like I played in the game, uh, black normally does what I need in the game, where he takes on c3 takes and takes on c4. And, and so here, there, there are a couple different ways of playing. Um, if you, if for a slightly weaker player, the most obvious line here to play would be queen a4, but after c6, queen takes c4, bishop g7, let's just say e3 here, black can play something like queen to a5, followed by bishop to e6 and knight to d7, or first knight to d7, knight b6, and then knight d5, or maybe knight a4. So while queen a4 picks up the pawn right away, it's probably not the most testing variation. So, so here I played e3, Anish played bishop to e6, and now I played the move queen to b1, which I think surprised Anish because... More recently, the topical line has been bishop to e2. And now here, black has a couple options. Uh, a few years ago, they were playing bishop to g7. And then after knight to h3, bishop takes h3, g takes h3. Uh, here, white has double h pawns, but the c4 pawn is weak. And also, white has the bishop pair here. So queen d7, bishop to g4, e6, bishop f3, attacking the pawn on b7, c5, rook b1, knight c6, and d takes c5. And, well, the position is a little bit unclear. White was slightly better in a game between Tomaszewski and Napomniachi from 2015. Recently, in the FIDE Grand Prix event in May, there was a very topical game between Evgeny Tomaszewski and Maxime Vashi Lagrave. And here, after bishop e2, black played knight to d7, knight to f3, bishop g7, castles, knight to b6, protecting this pawn on c4 again, queen c2, castles, rook fb1, basically trying to take advantage of the fact that this knight is in front of this pawn on b7, bishop d7, a4, threatening a5, forcing the knight to move, there will be rook takes b7, or bishop takes c4 as well, so black has to play a5 to prevent this, and after bishop g3, bishop c6, e4, trying to play for d5, and also creating creating a bigger pawn center here. Queen d7, rook takes b6, c takes b6, d5, trapping this bishop here on c6, because the pawn on a4 is protected twice, and the pawn on a4 also covers the b5 square. The bishop takes a4, rook takes a4, b5, rook a2, b4, c takes b4, a takes b4, bishop takes c4, Rook to a3, rook a3, b a3, queen a2, and now queen a4. And this this all has been the game uh, that I that I mentioned before between Tomaszewski and Maxim Vashi Lagrave. And the game is very interesting. It ended in a very long draw. Um, the position is objectively equal, but it's probably easier for black to play. And so um, that's why I chose to play something slightly different in this game. 
that's why I played Queen to B1 on move eight, basically to avoid all this heavy theory and, and try a slightly new idea. So here are their two moves. Um, the first move, which was not played in the game, is this move Queen to D5, which is a very natural move as it protects B7. It also attacks this pawn on G2. So in this position, it doesn't quite work. But say, say for example, I were to play Bishop E2, maybe at some point there would be some ideas that the Queen takes G2. In this particular position, it doesn't quite work. Um, but it is one idea just to keep an eye on this pawn on G2 and prevent maybe the fast development of Bishop E2. So on, on Queen D5, the correct move or the move I would play is Knight F3, Knight to D7, Bishop to E2, trying to finish development quickly. I want a castle, but also maybe Knight D2 to attack this pawn on C4. And if I get the Knight to D2, once again, I might have Bishop F3 putting pressure along this H1, A diagonal. So Bishop F5, Queen B2, Bishop to G7, castles, E5, Queen to B4, Threatening the pawn at c4, but more importantly, preventing black from castling kingside, and also threatening queen e7 checkmate. So here black plays c5 to prevent this. Queen takes c4. Queen takes c4. Bishop takes c4. Rook c8. And now bishop to d5. And the game goes on here, but white was slightly better in a, in a game between Aronian and Savidler, which was played in 2015 as well. So because of this game, I think that Anish decided instead on move 8, not to play queen d5 and to play the move b6. So after b6, I played the move knight to h3, very similar to this to one of the variations that we looked at before, um, in that I'm offering black the exchange on h3. But in this position with queen b1 and b6 having them played, it's not as good for black, because after you take on h3, if I take, first of all, I'm obviously threatening to capture the pawn on c4. But also I'm threatening to go bishop g2, and this rook on e8 could end up in a lot of trouble here. Um, whereas in the other line, the pawn was back on b7, so the diagonal was, was not um, as big of a deal for black. But in this situation, this would be quite dangerous, because after takes, let's say black plays queen to d5, white can play rook to g1, threatening bishop g2, um, attacking the queen on the rook on the long diagonal, picking up material. And here black is in a lot of trouble. Let's say black plays c6. White can play queen b4, and if b5, simply a4. And once again, I'm trying to rip open this diagonal, so I want to exchange pawns. Let's just say black plays a um, move like knight to d7. Takes, takes, and now bishop g2 wins, wins material as I'm attacking the queen and the rook. And so if I get to this point, this, this, this diagonal, this, this h1a diagonal becomes a very big problem for black. And so therefore, um, it would not be recommended to take on h3. And that's why Anish here played the move bishop to h6, which perhaps is a strange looking move, but it's very logical because it prevents me from putting the knight on f4. And so here, if black played a normal move like bishop to g7, I could play knight to f4, attacking the bishop on e6. And also, if the bishop moves away to, let's just say, d7, for example, after bishop takes c4, white is doing extremely well. And so after bishop h6, this prevents knight f4, and it also prevents knight g5. That, that's why here I played the move bishop to g5, offering an exchange of bishops, and also trying to get a knight to g5 or f4. And so here Anish took, if he were, if he were to have played bishop g7, I would play knight f4 anyway, and it's a very similar position to what we had before. So bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, and now queen to d5. Another move here would be bishop to d5, but after e4, if h6, just e takes d5, h takes g5, and bishop takes c4. And while material is equal here, white's position is definitely preferable due to the pawn structure. So here Anish played queen to d5. I played knight takes e6. And Anish, after a deep think here, played queen takes e6. And strangely enough, f takes e6 is actually a reasonable move. And in the post-mortem after our game when we were analyzing, Anish did mention that he seriously considered playing this move. Um, and there is nothing objectively wrong with it, but white probably is still slightly better. So there are a couple of different ways of playing here. Um, for a human, the most obvious way would be to play the direct e4. But after queen a5, queen to b2, c5... Um, bishop takes c4. If I push the pawn, let's say, to d5, black can simply take and play b5, and we'll follow up with knight d7 and knight to b6. 
And if I were to take, obviously, black simply takes back with the queen, and black is black is up a pawn here. And despite these double e pawns, black is clearly better because black can just play something like knight c6, knight to e5, and my bishop doesn't really have any targets here in the position. So if this had happened, I would have had to play bishop takes c4, c takes d4, rook to c1. And here you see the difference is even though I'm down a pawn, the bishop on c4 is well placed as attacking the pawn on e6. And if black takes on c3 here after rook takes c3, let's say knight d7 castles, not only am I attacking the pawn, black's king is also stuck in the center, and I'm, th I'm going to be able to create some threats along this a1, h8 diagonal as well. So that's why after rook c1, black plays knight d7. Leaving this pawn d4, I can't capture because of the pin to my king on e1. So I castle, and now an important move is d3, keeping this long diagonal closed. And after bishop takes e6, knight to c5, c4, attacking the rook on h8, also opening the long diagonal. Rook f8, bishop to d5, black and simply castle, long. And after queen g7, e6, bishop c6, simply d2. And this pawn on the seventh rank is going to be very dangerous long term. And also the knight on c5 has a very nice outpost here. And despite having the bishop on c6, and the queen on g7, there really are no threats as the knight covers all the key squares here. So black would have been completely fine. So that's why, while this line with e4 on move 13 is very tempting, it's not actually the best objectively. The, the best way to play here would be to play a4, threatening queen b5 check. So let's just say black plays a move like a5. Um, after queen to b5, Queen takes b5, a takes b5. I'll simply capture this pawn on c4 next move. And then these double pawns are very weak on e7 and e6. And so here, black should play knight to c6. And now queen to b5. And here black is a choice. Black can take on b5, a takes b5, and play knight a5. And black protects the pawn on c4, and black remains up a pawn here. However, it is probably better for white here, as I can play f4. Very important move to prevent this e5 break, um, which looks at perhaps a bit strange. But if I play something like bishop e2, if black gets the chance to play e5, d takes e5, and castle long, followed by rook d5 and rook d8, black will be doing very well, as both b5 and e5 will be very weak. And so that's why black should play king to f7. And now I have to play queen takes c4, because if I play bishop takes c4, now black can play queen takes g2. And after castles long, black can play knight to a5. Let's say I play rook g1. Black can play queen to c6, basically forcing an exchange of queens as black is attacking the bishop on c4 twice, so I can't move my queen. And then black would be up a pawn and doing quite well. So here, here white should play queen takes c4. But now black is a very key move here with knight to a5. And now I should take take on d5. I can also play queen takes c7, but after rook h c8, queen to f4, king to g8, black will be doing quite well. And so after knight a5, probably queen takes d5, e takes d5, and now rook to b1, black plays e6, h4, and c5. And here black has basically achieved complete equality. And there, there is, maybe you could make the claim white is slightly better after something like h5, just because the bishop is slightly better than the knight, the knight being on the rim, and also the potential to open the h file, but also maybe to open the b file as well for the rook. But objectively, black should be fine here. So f takes e6 would have been a completely reasonable move. Um, it's a very hard move, though, to play without any preparation. So that's why Anish played queen takes e6, and I played queen to b4, attacking the pawn twice, Basically, it's it's important that I get rid of this pawn as soon as possible because black if black can finish development, then black and keep the pawn on c4. Then black is doing very well simply because I have a light square bishop. And even though black has no dark square bishop, black's king will be completely safe on the king side. So I played queen to b4. On each played queen to d5. Similar to this f takes e6 line, it's a move to force me to take on c4 with the queen as opposed to the bishop because again g2 will be hanging. So queen takes c4. Queen c4, bishop takes c4, e6, and now I played the move bishop to e2. The point being that I want to prevent black from being able to play c5 in one move, um, because here if black plays c5, then I can just play bishop f3, attacking the rook and winning, winning material. 
So black has to play knight e7, played a4, king e7, a5, and black plays c6. If Anish plays c5 here, which is a very natural looking move, I can follow this up by playing bishop f3, rook to c8, a takes b6, a takes b6, king d2. And while this position probably should be drawn with correct play, it is still perhaps a little bit unpleasant because I might be able to play rook a7. And if black plays rook c7 to prevent rook a7, I can play rook h to b1. Long term, there's going to be some pressure on these pawns on b6 and c5. So even though black should be fine, it could be a little bit unpleasant. So that's why Anish played c6. And now I played king to b2. It's important to note also here the pawn structure as well, because I really would like to play c4 in a perfect world to prevent black from playing b5. But if I play c4, then black will be able to play c5. But now the difference, unlike the previous variation, is that after bishop f3, rook a c8, a takes b6, a takes b6, I can't play rook a7 here because black just takes on d4. And after cd4, ed4, black has rook takes c4. And likewise, I can't play king d2 for the same reason. Just takes, takes, and rook takes c4, and I'm down a pawn. So that's that's why in this position after c6, well, I really want to play c4. I don't I don't don't have time for it. So I played king d2. Anish played b5, played rook a b1. Anish played rook a b8. I played rook to b2. And here Anish played the move f5, which is probably fine still, but I think after this move, it becomes a little bit more difficult, and the moves are not as natural. Um, I felt that if Anish had played rook h d8, rook h b1, and had played e5, trying to prevent me from doing anything here in the center, that he should be fine. Simply because if I play something like bishop f3, attacking the pawn on c6, black can just go king to d6, followed by king to c7, and it's really hard for me to do anything with this pawn structure here, um, in the center, because I, I can't really ever play for d5 with my king on d2, um, and c4 isn't really a possibility. So if Anish had played, played like this, I think he would have been fine. Um, the testing line would have been to play c4, but after e takes d4, e takes d4, a6, protecting the pawn on b5, if I play king c3, black can play something like knight f6, threatening knight e4, and after bishop f3, just rook b to c8. And I think the black is doing completely fine here because I can't really exchange on b5 because then that'll put my king in check. Um, I can't really push d5 for the same reason. Black will take and the pin on my king on c3 is too much. So it's very hard for white to do anything. Um, and if I can't really take on b5 or play d5, then black should be fine considering these pawns here on d4 and c4. So this would have been a better way for Anish to play, but instead he played f5. I played rook h b1. He played king d6. Now I played f3. Basically a waiting move. Um, I wanted to prevent knight f6, knight e4, obviously. Also, I wanted to maybe play e4 at some point. But essentially, it's just a waiting move to see what black wants to do. So here on each kind of cracked. He was getting low on time. And again, the position still is completely fine. But after e5, it gets tricky. And Anish here was getting pretty low on time. I think he had probably about five or six minutes. And once the position opens up, it just becomes a lot a lot more difficult to play. And so here I played the move c4. And now Anish took on d4. I took on b5. He took, and I took back. Now it's important to note that in this position after d takes e3, king e3, the position is still objectively equal. But unlike before, the bishop now has options. And maybe I have threats along this diagonal a4, e8. Long term, maybe I can go to c4 and g8 because all his pawns are on light squares. Um, and obviously here I'm threatening also to just check him on d2 or d1. So even though the position remains roughly even, it becomes a lot more difficult to play now. So here on each played knight to f6. I played bishop to c4. He traded on b2. Rook to e8 check. King to d4. And now he played rook to e7, basically taking, taking control of the 7th rank so that I can never put a rook on b7. Um, but here I played rook to b8. And Anish played rook to d7, threatening king c7, check. A discovery on my king on d4, and then he would be able to just take the rook on b8. So here I played rook to c8 to stop that. And also here, black can't really move his king. So if he goes king e7, I'll go king to e5. And the, the rook and the knight are not ideally placed in this position, and it becomes very hard to play. So here Anish played rook to b7. Now I played a6. He played rook to b4. I played king to c3. 
He played rook to a4. I played king to b3. And now he played knight to d7, which is a, a very critical move because here if Anish had played rook to a1, after rook to a8, just picking up this pawn in a7, he would have been in a lot of danger and pro probably close to lost. So Anish found this nifty idea knight to d7. The point being, if I take on a4, he has knight b6 check, uh, king b5, knight takes c8. And now this, this, these pawns in a7 and a6 are fixed, and I have no entry squares because his king is so much better than my king on d6 relative to my king on b5. So here I played bishop to b5. He played rook to a5. Now it's worth noting he could have played rook to a1, and it would have turned into the game, I believe, um, after rook to d8. So it would have been the same thing, but he played rook a5, king b4, rook to a1, rook to d8, rook b1. And now here, since we were close to time control, um, I decided to repeat moves with king a5, rook a1, and king b4. Originally, I think I wanted to play bishop to a4, but, I, but during the game, I didn't realize that here, Anish has a move king e6, because I, I assumed that here I was winning. But after king to e6, if I play rook takes d7, he plays rook takes a4, king takes a4, king takes d7. And in fact, black's probably winning if this happens. So in fact, I had to go king b4, rook b1, kept repeating moves uh, with king a4, king b3. And now I played king c4, rook c1, king d3, rook c7. Uh, I really wanted to play king d4, um, but here, unfortunately, Anish has rook to d1. The point being that if Anish plays rook to c7 here, um, I believe that after the move h4, this should be winning, if I'm not mistaken, with king e7 and rook takes d7. Because after takes, 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 I believe that here king e5, king c6, king f6, king b6, king g7... Um, takes, takes, king b7, king g6, a5, h5 is winning. I win by one tempo. a4, h6, a3, h7, a2, h8, queen, and I cover the, I queen and cover the a1 square first. So that's why I really wanted to play king b4 because this pawn ending after h4, I believe, is losing for black. Unfortunately, after king d4, black can play rook to d1. And now after king to e3, black can simply play a move like king to e7, and black should be fine here. Or sorry, king to c7, not king to e7, because king e7 would, would lose to rook a8. But after king to, king to c7, say rook h8, black can just play knight f6, and black is doing completely fine again. So, so that's why I really wanted to play king d4, but I ended up playing king d3. Because here, if black plays rook d1 after king e2, I'm attacking the rook, and black doesn't have time for king e7 because I just go rook to h8, and rook takes h7. So Anish played rook c7, and now I played king d4. Anish played king e7, and the point is, unlike the previous variation with the pawn in h2, if I try to go for this pawn ending, now I lose by one tempo because after takes, takes king e5, king c6, king f6, king b6, king g7, king a6, king h7, king b5, after king g6, a5, um, if I try g4, black can just simply take. And if, if I play f4, I can probably make a draw. But a4, f5, a3, f6, a2, f7, a1, queen, f8, queen. And the, this this will lead to a drawn, drawn end game. Um, and if, if I try h4, which is what I would, would have liked here, unfortunately, I, lo I lose by one tempo. After a3, h6, a2, h7, a1, queen, the, he queens first, and he covers h8. So that's why I really, the other line I really wanted to play king d4, because with the pawn in h4, I queen first. Whereas in this, this position, after king to e7, my pawn is on h2, not h4. So here I played rook to a8. Anish played king to d6. I played h4. And here Anish blunder by playing king e7. Um, if Anish had played knight to b6 here, he probably would have held the draw. As a, after rook d8, king e7, rook b8, king d6, something like h5, gh5, bishop d3, and rook g7, attacking the pawn on g2, should be a draw, because there are going to be so few pawns left on the board that neither side can do anything. However, Anish played king e7, and I think he forgot here that I could simply take the knight on d7, because now after rook d7, rook d7, King to e5, Anish played king f7. The point being that if black plays rook c7 here, I have rook h8. And after rook c5 check, king d4. If rook a5, rook h7, 
uh, king f6, rook takes a7, and this black can try to play something like rook a4, but this this endgame will be lost after king c5, rook takes h4, rook b7, rook a4, and simply king to b6. And so that's why after king e5, Anish could not play rook c7, he had to play king f7, and now I played rook b8, trying to put a rook on b7, since I have this pawn on a6 to protect it. Anish played rook e7, I played king d5, played king f6, and now I played rook to b7, he played rook e5, I played king to d4, and now, as, as everyone knows, in rook and pawn endgames, really the only way to hold when you're down material usually is to if you have an active rook and your opponent does not. But in this position, um, for Anish, unfortunately for Anish, after rook takes a7, this, this is losing. First of all, because of the king placement, relative king on f6 relative to my king on d4. And secondly, my king is also be, very close to protecting this, this pawn on a6 as well. So here Anish played f4. I played king to c4, Anish played rook a2, and here I played king c5, which is it's very important here to not play something like rook a8, because if I play rook a8 here, black can play king g7, and if I go king to b5, I believe here black can play king to h6. And while this might somehow be winning, it's going to be very tricky with this king coming to h5, h4, g3, and taking on g2. Um... And so the other important thing to realize here also is that the rook on a7, when I move the rook, I'll be able to push a7 and just bring my king up alongside the pawn. So that's why here I played king to c5. Anish played h5. If he, if he were to have played rook takes g2, I simply play rook takes h7, followed by a7. And it's just winning, on, it's just winning because the rook is on the seventh rank. So I can just mark my king straight up to b8 and then cover with the rook on b7. Like, for example, say king to e5, king to b6, um, let's just say rook b2, king c7, rook a2, king to b8, threatening to queen, and if rook b2, I, I just play rook b7, blocking the check, and I'll just push the pawn to the 8th rank on the next move. So that's why Anish, instead of playing rook takes g2, he played h5. I played rook to, Now I played rook to a8, because here if black takes the pawn on g2, now I can play a7. And after rook to a2, I play rook to f8 check, and I push the pawn on the next move. So here on each played rook to c2, king to b6, rook to b2. And I repeated once again, just to make sure we, we reach time control, is that we get, as we were able, to, as we got more time at move 60. So I played king c5, rook c2, king b6, rook b2, and now I played king a7 after a think. Uh, since it was move 61, now I had time to calculate and make sure that there were no tricks. Anish played rook takes g2. Now I played rook to b8, which is a very critical move. The point being that by playing rook b8, I want to play rook b6 check, then king b7, and maybe black will not be able to check my king on b7, and since the rook will be on b6. So Anish played rook f2, rook b6, king g7, and now I played king to b7. And like I said, exactly as I mentioned before, with this setup with the rook on b6 and the king on b7, Black has no checks from behind, and I just push the pawn to the 8th rank, and this this setup is completely winning, if you can ever achieve it. So, Anish played rook takes f3, I played a7, Anish played rook to a3, and here I played rook to a6, very key, a key move, because if I queen, this this might be winning anyway, after takes, takes, um, but after f3, rook b3, g5, it's a little bit tricky, and... I suspect this this probably is a draw now, but but at any rate, there's no need for any of this, so I just played rook to a6, offering the exchange of rooks, because if black exchanges, um, he's too slow. f3, I just queen and f2. Just, uh, queen to f3, and I pick up the pawn in f2. And so Anish played rook to b3. I played king c6, rook c3. Anish resigned in view of the fact that after king c6, if he plays rook c3 check, I go king d5. Rook c8, I queen. Rook takes a8, rook takes a8. And the thing is, my king here is on d5 as opposed to a8. So after g5, I just take king g6, king e4, king takes g5, and just simply rook g8, king h4, king takes f4, king h3, and now just king f3. And if black plays king h4, I can just play rook g1, king h3, rook h1, checkmate. If black plays h4, I can just play rook to h8. King h2, rook takes h4, king g1, rook h3, king f1, and rook h1 with mate. So that's why after king c6, Anish resigned. Um, 
And so it, this was a very interesting middle game, queenless middle game. Um, and I think it's a good example of positions where the bishop can be better than the knight, especially because once I got the bishop to c4, I, the bishop had a lot more scope and I controlled the b file with my rooks. So while the position objectively was equal and black probably could have drawn the correct play, um, it was always a little bit tricky, and Anish didn't quite find the right defense, and so that's why I won the game. And uh, with the first-round victory in Norway, it certainly got me off to a good start, and I think it helped me uh, tremendously in, in terms of having a, a pretty good result overall. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this game, uh, and I'll be back soon with more videos uh, of games from my recent event in Norway.